Hello everyone, my name is Jay Martin. A user on the channel had posted a comment requesting an updated video for the overview on nation strengths because the meta had shifted on on the ladder. Now we're only allowing four light infantry and a maximum of three melee infantry apparently. And and also that there were some tweaks made to the stats of uh, various units. I wasn't aware of that. So uh, what I did do, well, first of all, I thought that was a really great suggestion. And so I did go back and make a spreadsheet of the stats of all the units, which was interesting. I'm not, I don't think I'd ever actually done that before, but I did it now. So now I know the accuracy and the cost and the morale of everyone and everything. So we can go about and do that. And I, Again, a great suggestion. So I'm going to redo an overview on the nation's strengths and maybe some builds you might bring with them. A couple assumptions I'm working with. The first is you're just playing a 1v1 game on grassy multiplayer with no artillery. It's just kind of how my, my brain is going to approach it. Um, and th the second thing is that picking better units really matters. I played so many games against players that just bring shitty units. Oh, why'd you bring a Highland Foot to a grassy game? What? Why'd you do that? You you just lost. You know, like the subtle differences like that can really matter. If you think Highland Foot are really cool and you just want to play with them and lose games because of it, that that's all you go. You you be you. But um, the point of this video is how do you kind of optimize those strengths? Uh, the first question I kind of had to ask myself is what does the change to four light infantry really mean? For context, back when I played, um, the rule set was maximum of five, light, five lights, no art. Uh, and now it's apparently a maximum of four lights. What I think this means for the effect on games is A, it means that France and Sweden, nations that have crappy lights uh, and good cav, who don't like to play with lights, get better. And it means that like GB, Prussia, and Portugal, nations with the best lights, get worse because you can only deploy one less of their best unit. In terms of the effect on games, I think that maybe means that a lot of players are then going to throw in an extra cavalry unit, which maybe makes games more, a little more aggressive or makes the games a little more open, which I'm not opposed to. I, th I think that's an interesting idea, but m maybe that's kind of how things look now as opposed to eight years ago. Um, the second thing I want to kind of drill into your head is that Accuracy coin flips matter a lot. Um, when we talk about, hold on, let me show you. Yeah, we're here. Okay, so when we talk about accuracy, so I don't know if you can read how high definition this video is, but th this British foot unit right here has an accuracy of 50. And if we compare that to the this fencible has an accuracy of 35. Accuracy coin flips determine a lot of games. I actually have a video on the channel called Variance in which both Riskard and myself get absolutely destroyed just on accuracy coin flips. Um, what this means is with an accuracy of 50 versus 35 is if these two units walked up to each other and both shot at the same time, um, the foot unit would have a 50% fatality rate and the fencible only a 35 rate or something like that. And that's just the first volley. So let's say that 50% of the fencibles die on the first volley, but only 35% of the foot die. That means there's now 65% of the foot left to shoot at 55% or 50% of the fencibles. And these advantages just keep snowballing, like as the games go on. Now, the scenario I'm giving you is purely a one-on-one a -on -one or a line-on-line -line fight, and we have things like cavalry and guard units to adjust this. But the accuracy statistic is probably the most powerful thing in the game, and it's what makes Great Britain a lot better than it really should be. So... And lastly, uh, 
Accuracy is important, really important. Uh, and then the last thing before we get into actually talking about how to play with the individual nations, I just want to make an attention to the difference between foot, see how that says line infantry, and then if I pick Coldstream Guards here, we're calling that elite infantry. There's a real distinction, if you're newer to the game, between line infantry, right there, and elite infantry. For instance, I can only buy one cold stream. It's an elite. But I can buy is whoop, oh, is it clicking the wrong thing? I can buy as many of these guys as I want. Alright, so when I use the term line infantry, this is what I'm talking about. An infinitely repeating unit. Alright, so the difference between line and elite is useful to note. I don't really use elite infantry a lot most of the time when I play because they're too expensive and bringing 20 units is important. I'll mention that later in the video, but just FYI that exists. The second thing you need to know is the difference between the different kinds of light infantry. So what I'm hovering over here is called a light foot or this is classified as a light infantry. You'll notice, sorry, I should have done this earlier. A line infantry unit has 120 people in it. A light infantry has 90. So three quarters of the people, but they have a longer range. 100 versus 80. And then the third type of infantry is called a rifle. These guys have a range of 125. They're going to have higher accuracy stats, uh, but there's only half as many of them. There's only 60. All right. So regular line infantry, the important thing here is they can form square against cav. Light infantry here cannot form square against cav, but they have higher range and better accuracy. And then your rifle here is half as many people, more accuracy, um, but they're completely defenseless to cap. Okay, so that's kind of a, a kind of an intro and you know to the game or whatever. And now let's talk about um, an overview on the nation's strengths. Um, generally considered, the three strongest nations of the game are Great Britain, Prussia, and France. So I'm going to start with them. If you're playing multiplayer games, you probably want to use one of these three nations. Their units are just generally of better quality. That's why you want to do it. Um, let's start with Great Britain. A footnote, I pretty much never use any of these expensive generals. If you want to you throw something experimental together, then you're more than welcome to. Uh, but the strength of Great Britain is their foot unit. Um, at a cost of 760, this unit has an accuracy stat of 50. This is by far the highest accuracy stat of any line unit in the game. The Prussians have an accuracy of 45, the, and, and then basically everybody else has an accuracy of 40. So what this means is you're going to get a lot of value out of this foot unit just because of the raw power of its accuracy stat. Um, if we're playing a um, max for uh, lights, the King's German Legion here is just, it, it, it's, it, it doesn't even need to be in the game. It should just be the same unit. But these guys are basically identical. But your build with um, Great Britain maybe look something like this. Oh, my out of money. I need to bring a militia. GB does have two unique, um, I guess those are just regular light dragoons. I don't know, but with your GB, you want to be heavy on the infantry because that's your best unit. <coughs> Excuse me. You, you ha maybe bring a militia to make the money work out. That's a two cav variant of um, GB. If you wanted to bring more cav, 
I generally prefer the heavy dragoon over the light dragoon. These units just stick around a lot longer. Um, I mean, I think that the 15th Hussars is an automatic include. Is there another 10th? Yeah, yeah. So these two. Can I afford that? I can't afford that. Eh. I mean, that's fine for a 4 cab version. But, I mean, I'd be a. Eh, hold on. Let me do this. Can I get another foot in there? Yeah. That looks pretty good. I mean, so that's your four lights and one, two, three, four, five. You know, 11 line and three calves seems pretty good to me. It, this is kind of down to your preference. Do you want that extra cab unit? Do you want the extra line unit? The important part is that um, both your lights and your line have an accuracy of 50. So w what you really want to do with this army is just kind of get it shooting is what you want to do and minimize the enemy doing tricky stuff to you with like cav and whatnot. So you shut their cav down and then you have a shootout with um, your line versus theirs, then you're in a pretty good spot is what you want to do. Uh, Prussia. Pet favorite of mine. And a nation really hit by this nerf to having only four fusiliers. This is the best light infantry unit in the game. They have an accuracy of 55. Better than both of the British units. So you could win a lot of games just sitting behind five Prussian lights. Um, the good news is that, again, we have a couple unique DLC units here. Um, the Prussian cab is actually really good. Uh, it's not quite as good as France's. <coughs> but look at this. I mean, if you have both of these DLC units, both of these Lancer units are going to be good. Or I guess those are Hussars, excuse me. Oh, there's a third one. I mean, so if you're bringing each of these three DLC units, which I'm going to assume you have, then... I mean, the Prussian Lancer unit is great just by itself. It's only 570. So you have a really good cavalry core. And then y your fusiliers are still really good. You can only bring four of them. But your musketeer then is... Um, can we make it? Yeah, we made it. I mean, your musketeer has an accuracy of 45. So that's like baseline, pretty much. Yeah, actually, I guess it's above baseline. Most of the other countries we're going to talk about have an accuracy of like 40. So the the problem is you're an underdog against GB, I think, here with their accuracy of 50. But 45 is still okay. And I, I think this is a fine army. You have $560 left, so you could do something interesting like put chevrons on half your units or bring an expensive general like... Let's do that gets an extra morale to each of our units and then sure we can do that. I think that's fine. So that's maybe an overview on the nation strength of um, Prussia. Uh, you could try bringing guard units I guess. Again I don't really play with guards. I really think bringing 20 units is important, so I don't really ever play with the heavy cav or anything like this. I think this is a really strong army, actually. I mean, we don't, we're not fluffing with a militia or anything. I think that's okay. Uh, France is a lot more complicated just because there's so many units available. You know, flagship. Uh, nation of the game, so that's cool. Um, an important thing to note is that the you have a couple options for line infantry here. You have fusiliers, and these are deadbeat, middle of the water, 40 accuracy, 6 morale. And then we have Polish and Swiss line. And these are a bit of an upgrade. It costs money for it. 
Um, the Polish are 45 accuracy, 7 morale. Sorry, that's those guys. So I like these guys. 45 accuracy, 7 morale. The Swiss are 45 accuracy, 6 morale. Not not so much a fan of that. I think I'd rather pay the cheaper cost for these fusiliers down here. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that the French light infantry work a little bit differently uh, than most other nations we described, the 100s and the 125s. These guys have 100s called Chasseur. They're really expensive and they suck. They have an accuracy of 40 and a morale of 6. You don't want to use those. What you do want to use are these Voltigeurs, or Voltigeurs, eh, whatever. Uh, these guys are a little bit cheaper. Uh, they have a range of 6. Uh, sorry, what's the range? The range is 60. No, an accuracy of 60. And a morale 7. So you want to use these guys. Sorry, hold on. So, God damn it. No, I don't want you. I want you. So, a French army might start with four volts. And the real advantage of volts is they seem to take less damage. There's only 60 of them to the unit, so they're kind of a rifle unit with reduced range. But they just kind of seem to spread out and take less damage over time. Um, the real question with France is not how you use your infantry. You're going to want three old guard, the best unit in the game. You're going to really want three old guard. You'd be amazed at how many games you win just because you have old guard. The real question with when you play France is how you want to do uh, your cav. And you have two options. The first option is you use this shooter cav unit here. This unit is super overpowered. It's broken. It should not exist. You win so many games playing with the shooter cav. In fact, uh, if I hopped in the ladder right now and I saw a nine-star player who is pre-chosen France, I'd know for a second they'd chosen the shooter cav. Um, shooter cav or dumb. So, you can do something like you give yourself six shooter cav and three old guard, and it really doesn't matter what you fill the rest out with. Oh, well, we can't do that because it's cheating. So, how much more money do I have? And maybe you wind up with something like this like, you wind up with just 19 units. <coughs> right? But this army is really terrifying. This army wins a lot of games 1v1 on the ladder because we chose to go with the shooter cab. Um, if we didn't want to go shooter cab, then maybe we go with the lancers here. And the lancers are still really good. Right, France kind of has an embarrassment of riches in terms of its cavalry. Um, generally, you always want to bring the three old guard. Volts are good and cheap, so you bring them. Yeah, and then it's just kind of a question of what kind of cav do you want to bring? That's kind of the issue, so whatever. Not concerned about it. There's basically two ways to play France. You either play Shooter Cav or you play Lancers. You figure it out. Back up to Austria. Um, a old joke I told a lot of time ago. Uh, where is it? Here we go. German Fusiliers cost seven hundred dollars. If you do the math. You can bring exactly 20 of them. And 10 years ago, a friend of mine named Krasnikov used to do this exact thing. 
won some games with it. I actually think I had a thing on my channel like three years ago, like 20 line challenge. And we had some fun results with that. The reason people really like to play Austria is good news for you new rules people is for their really cheap Lancer unit, the Ulan. People really like this unit. And then, um, not the Jaeger, but the Grenzer, uh, the Grenzer here is, is a really great unit. When you find people play in Austria, they're, they're, you know, one of the, you know, you find people doing things like, I like to bring Ulans. So they bring the Ulans. You know, there's five of them, and then we get some line in there and, and whatnot. Austria's basically like a poor man's Great Britain. They kind of got the same skills, but maybe better cab than GB, I guess, to be fair. Like, I'd rather have an Ulan than a fucking Dragoon. So Austria's got that going for them, but when people play Austria, they're kind of messing around or bringing four Ulans or whatever. I honestly have never played with any of the um, heavy cab from these guys. I don't know. I don't know how they work. But I also just straight up never play Austrians very often. Uh, this unit is interesting. By all means, please, for fuck's sake, never buy this. It is a $1,230 Jaeger unit. Uh, although maybe there's room for that challenge there. Like, can someone send me a replay when that unit is relevant? That would be interesting. Because this unit totally sucks. That, I would be interested. But that's Austria. So it's, I didn't give you a proper build. I'm sorry. So we're looking at four Grenzers. And we're doing the We Live Ulans thing. <coughs> so something like that. Hungarian. We're just taking we're just taking Hungarians for the morale. Right, but a standard build is something like this. Like we have an ass load of cav. We have six cav and then line and grenzers. It's it's not that exciting. Not that exciting. Um who do I get next to my list? Ottomans. I gotta tell you, man, Ottomans are one of my favorite factions. And this whole three um, melee unit limit really blows. Like, let me tell you my favorite build. No, oh, this is it. This is where it. Oh, oh shit, shit, shit. Some Janissary. Uh, who do I use? It was something like two, three, four, five, six. Two of them. What was my favorite build? Anyway, my favorite out of my build was just like, fuck you up, melee. I think if Ottoman can't use melee infantry, they just kind of suck. Um,. Their line unit here costs 780 with an accuracy of 45. And I'm like, that's really bad. Um, they have some rifles here, and rifles just kind of suck generally. And the idea that these guys are morale 6 with a 60 reload just kind of reinforces that. I want to say I don't know how I'd play Ottomans with the limit on three melee units. Um, the one thing that you're going for them is... So this is a shooter cav unit. So you might transform... And the problem is their line of is so expensive. So... 
this is a hard one. What I, what I'm trying to get at is you lean on the shooter cav as the core to what you're trying to do. So let's say we have the three Janissaries. Those are our melee units. All right, there's six line. I can't even bring bazooks, man. Ah, this is so hard. Um, sorry, that was the right thing. Uh. I guess you do something like this, like, I don't even know how this play would play out on a game, like on Grassy, but how many show runs can I give them? Yeah, maybe. It. I think that tactics of an army like this would be weird because what you're trying to do is I mean the shooter calf want to engage on the flank right so your melee troops would have to be there to kind of help them do that like shooter calf maybe a battle goes down like shooter calf engage the flank pin it and then your melee troops hit it is a way you could do that like that could work it take kind of a clueless opponent for that to make sense though I don't know the limit on three melee troops for the Ottomans is, is kind of crushing I think uh I, th this seems okay, but bad at the same time. Ah, let me click. What have we not done? Portugal. Um, Portugal was a nation everybody played because of this Casadori unit. It's their line of tree unit. It is actually the best line of tree unit of the game. Um, it is an accuracy of 55. And I think if you limit them down to being able to only use four of them, just nobody plays it. And Portugal sucks, obviously. They have no options. Let's say you have some Kev. I mean, great. We got 20 bucks left. <laughs> Portugal sucks. You take away their best unit. What do you want them to do? Not, not much should be said there. Um, we already have Russia. So Russia is a more interesting story. So generally speaking. The Russians suck at accuracy. So if I did their musketeer unit and their militia unit, you notice that 35 on accuracy right there. And that 25 on accuracy right there. And if I were even to pull up a Jaeger, you'll notice that 35 accuracy right there. So these motherfuckers don't shoot too hot. What this leads to is an emphasis on the melee attack on the Russians. The bad news is I have no idea how to t give you a melee build for the Russians. The Russians have some interesting options for cavalry. The first is this Cossack Cavalry, which is kind of a militia cavalry, which is kind of interesting. It doesn't exist anywhere else in the game. But they got some Hussars that are okay. We got some, you know, we got some Lancers. 
Um, I want to say I'm not competent enough with Russians to give you an actual build. I mean, we could do something like, hey, give you four hussars and some musketeers and some lights. Um, the important thing, I think, to take away <coughs> from the Russian part is that their accuracy generally sucks, but they're also generally really good in melee. So what I do know is that when players use this faction successfully, um, their militia unit has a really good melee stat attack. So when people do use Russia, um, they do a melee attack thing. And I don't really have any experience with that, so I can't help you there. But if you want to experiment with Russia and do melee attacks, then go for it. Oh, we have Spain. The only interesting thing about Spain, I'm going to do Spain very quickly. Spain is basically the same thing as Great Britain, except all of its units have like minus five to all stats. The only difference is they have, is this one of them? Come on, where are the guerrilla units? Yeah, so they have these cool guerrilla units that can deploy anywhere on the, f well, a limited extra area on the field, which can be really neat for a trick sometimes or playing a team game or whatever. So the guerrilla units are really fun, but otherwise Spain just kind of sucks. Um, yeah, Cazador, wait a minute, where is it? The Cazadores. Where are the Cazadores? Is that them? The Cazadores! Yeah. They can deploy in or on the field. So you can deploy them, like, behind your enemy's, like, spawn location. And if they're not aware that this exists, maybe get one in on them. So, Spain can be kind of fun that way. Um, there, let's see. Light of sucks. It's not terrible. They just kind of suck. They're like they're like we have everything Great Britain has, but we kind of suck at it. It's kind of what, what Spain is about. So, be whatever. Do the Spain thing. Okay, Sweden. Sweden is actually pretty sweet. Um, what Sweden is really good at is this mounted Jaeger unit. It's kind of like the French um, shooter cab. It's actually exactly like the French shooter cab. Um, a good friend of mine, Karlo Vajko, is probably one of the best Napoleon Total War players in the world. Karlo Vajko hates playing 1v1 games on grassy. However, Karlo Vajko has never lost a 1v1 game on Grassy because he just brings Sweden with like 10 shooter cap and he just kills everyone and I've watched a lot of his games and I'm not exactly sure how he does it but he just fucking kills everyone this mounted Jaeger here is one of the more important potent units in the game. That's really what Sweden's got for it. Um, the lifeguard of foot you're going to want to use. This is one of the few examples where I really um, encourage the use of line infantry because we, you wind up with Sweden as something like this. Like, you have a bunch of mounted Jaegers, and then you're like, fuck, I have a lot of money left over. Um, the mounted Jaeger is a really, really strong unit. So, if you're in the uh, mind of... You say to yourself, right now in the lobby, there's a bunch of fucking nine-star dipshits who want to play French Shooter Cav and 
and I'm going to take a bunch of ladder points off them. Bring Sweden. Because all of those, you know, kind of fake nine-star French people that just play the shooter cav, this is the army that kills them. This is the army that totally destroys them. So what Sweden is really good at is playing the 1v1 grassy flatlands game with just a bunch of fucking shooter cav. And Karlovachko hates playing grassy flatlands, but he just brings Sweden. Seems to win. And the last... Hold on. Let's get to it. United Netherlands. Generally the worst nation of the game. Although not not that bad. I mean our line on our lights have an accuracy of forty. I would like to point out two things to you. The first is that this carabiner unit here, their heavy cav, is extremely undercosted for what its value is. It's a very good unit. And then also, um, their Hussar is quite good for, again, what it costs. Now, you get back to the old problem is that the stats on their infantry over here suck. But, but, um, you get, you know, their cab is under-costed. And I, I don't know if it's a video on my channel or not. Oh, I think, I'm pretty sure it is. But... Uh, I have a video of Amber bringing um, I have a video of Amber bringing something like this like 10 cav and 10 line and just completely destroying someone so it's possible it's very possible all right, so but you got to be creative. I mean, the strength of Netherlands is um, their cav is really good, their infantry sucks. Well, the sucks is a strong term, but anyway, there you go. I think that's a look at all of the nations. Again, assume you're playing one v one on grassy flats. If you're playing a train map, I'm sure it'll be relevant. Uh, accuracy corn flips are important. Keep that in mind is important. Um, also, everyone, during these coronavirus times, I hope you're staying safe. Stay isolated. Good God, if anybody gets positive or whatever, let me know on Steam. I'd love to hear from you, and I hope you're doing okay. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you in the next video.